All right. All right. Uh, let me make it a little bigger. Okay. Six point five JP interviews. Okay, first one. There is more stuff planned for the gap between six point five five and seven point zero than they covered at the NA Fan Fest. They'll talk more about it at the EU one. They they need to spread out announcements and stuff since there are three Fan Fests again now. Okay. Okay, so I I don't think at NA Fan Fest they announced uh the 14 and 16 collab. I don't think they did. I could be wrong. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure they didn't. But we already know this is happening, so I feel like that could be one of the things that could be announced there at EU Fan Fest. That could be one of them. This is cool. We don't know by how much more stuff. Okay. I already said one more thing, and we have the Fall Guys thing coming. I don't know if that's 6.5 or 5.5. 5. I can't remember. But, um, so there's two things we're getting. I don't know how much more, but we'll see. I mean, this is cool. Zero as a character was planned from the start of Eden Walker, but was left a patch only thing. One of the first main characters developed just through patch content. Different writers write different patches uh, scenarios, though. So they've needed some oversight from Oda and Ishikawa to keep things consistent. Okay, so I know how a lot of people have felt <laughs> about the patch story. I myself have enjoyed it. I myself have enjoyed it. I only thought there was one bad, boring... I only thought there was one boring MSQ patch, and I think that was 6.3. I think that was 6.3. The rest for me were fine, and I have enjoyed them. I am more interested in how this is going to wrap up and end and lead into end uh dawn trail right because if the ending it, it, ending per se if if it if this little filler thing kind of ends and i feel like it was just a waste of time right then that's gonna be a bummer but if you feel if it was decent ending right then it then i then i think it would be cool right for, for me for me it's all about how this ends right if i whether i like it overall or not right uh, Zeramus will be a more physical fight instead of a brain training fight. Note, these are machine learning translation terms that come up all the time when talking about 14 interviews. The closest thing is that brain training means puzzly. Yoshi did have to ask them to amp it up a bit during production though. Okay, so physical. Like moving? Like, this is just, like, the translation weirdness going on, but, um, that's cool, I guess. Um, what was the most puzzly fight we've had in N. Walker? Or Trial, I should say. Um, the, I, I think three come to mind. I would say Zodiac, Ensinger, and Rubicante. I would say those three. I didn't like Rubicante, dude. Bro, I could never figure out the panels. I could never figure out the panels without having to, like, look it up. Like, I... No idea, okay? But, like, beyond that, I just didn't really like Rubicon that much, okay? I feel like it's one of the worst trials this expansion, along with Ensinger. Or, okay, I should say Extremes. It's one of the worst Extremes this expansion. I didn't like it, and I didn't like Ensinger as well. Normal Trials is a different story. I think Ensinger Normal Trial is one of the best in the entire game, but that's a normal trial, right? That's just story. Extremes is different. My favorite extreme so far has been Barbaricia and Golbez. Those have been really fun. Those were really fun. You should have to ask them a bit to amp it up during production, though. So I'm not sure what terms this means. I don't know if this means in difficulty. I mean, I mean, it's, a, it's an extreme. It's not going to be that hard anyways right uh we'll see I, I i'm interested i'm very looking forward to zeramus I, I i'm very looking forward they've changed up their pre-production process for fights since 6.0 now section leaders just do a preliminary check where they give feedback about the fight concepts and mechanic ideas and then a final check once everything is done to make sure it all works 
and the numbers are good. In the past, leaders were more, a lot more hands-on on the iterative feedback, which was a huge workload for Yoshi in particular. Okay, there's two. There could be a couple of reasons for this, and I'm gonna name one of the reasons for this. Is one of the reasons. Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> it's true. Okay, what makes me say that is this little uh, in parentheses for Yoshi in particular. Yeah. I, I think that's one of the factors, not the whole story. OK, that's not the whole reason, but that's one of the factors. And it also kind of makes sense when you look how the whole rate tier has been. Actually, yeah, like rate tier, even top like like P8 disaster, like that was just a failure on their part. Like that was just a Q&A check failure on their part. Oh, P10, dude. <laughs> P10 as a turn two. Fuck. <laughs> Like, I feel like they just should have, they should have literally just swapped P11 and P10, in my honest opinion. Just swap them, you know? I mean, I don't know if this goes for pre-production kind of thing, but like, some fights definitely felt so fucking boring. Like, P6. P6 was so fucking boring. And kind of P7. I, I, I don't like P7 that much either. But, uh, yeah, this can make sense. And, and also, top. The bugs in top, that was just a Q&A oversight as well like those bugs that were in there uh yeah so definitely when you see what this expansion has come out with their fights this makes a lot of sense his zeramus extreme feedback was that it was a bit too honest and to amp it up a bit what does too honest mean it was too simple too straightforward uh, I'm not. This is weird translation. I don't know what this means. Uh, Azura will be implemented as a, a trial in game sometime after JP FanFest. So this is like sometime after January, I think. I think JP FanFest is like in January. Um, yeah, this was the one at FanFest, NA FanFest, right? Um, I didn't do this trial. I didn't bother doing the trial because the line for that shit was fucking abysmal. <laughs> The line for that was abysmal, bro. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way I was going to be standing in line uh, waiting to do a trial that's going to last eight minutes. <laughs> okay? Ain't no way. Okay? I would rather just sit in the fucking seat, bro. Sit in the crowd seat and just watch the fucking uh, panels that they had going on. I'd rather just do that, um, which is what I did end up doing. The last alliance raid might be stronger than usual this time. Okay. I mean, I mean, we'll see, right? I mean, the last two were like not, it wasn't that hard. The last two were not that hard. I think presentation wise and how everything looks has been amazing though. I think it's been amazing though. Not to mention the music. The music has been amazing too. But I just want to see people die more on the first day. I just want to see people die more because it's very funny and it's fun. Both the scenario writer and battle team for Myths of the Realm were made up of mostly younger and newer people. Okay, I can't comment on the story. To be honest, I have not been following along with the story of the Myths of the Realm. Not at all. So I don't know if, if the quality of the story is interesting or not. I don't know. But the battle team, aside for it being a tad too easy, uh, I feel like they've done a good job. Aside from it just being a tad easy, it's a tad easy, okay? I want to see more deaths. All right, for day one, I want to see more deaths, dude. But I feel like they've done a good job. Like, yeah, like, that's not bad. I mean, it's an alliance raid, right? Like, it just, it just needs to be a tad harder. They have adjusted the rewards of alliance raid roulette to be consistent with how much time you'd spend in a given instance to make up for the item level cheese removal. I mean, they did the same thing for MSQ, right? Yoshi and some development staff did feel bad at times for changing slash removing mechanics for trust support, but felt that it was important both in terms of maintainability and playability in the future, as well as giving a better onboarding process should four new players all match into the same dungeon. All oh, right, like whenever they reworked some of the uh, old dungeons. You know, I never thought about this, right? <clears throat> But I feel like uh, them doing the trust support for all dungeons in the game must have taken up some development resources because they've they worked on it throughout the whole expansion. You know, trust implementation and management was was very hard and usually took a skilled veteran on the development to, to do. Yeah. OK, so 
it does take time. Like, it's not like a very easy thing, I guess. I mean, going off of this. Um, no concrete plans on making old eight-man content doable with trusts. It's easier to do trusts for four-man content. So some of these fights might have to be made four-man if it ever happened. But Yoshi feels strongly about having the final boss trials always be eight-man. No firm decisions yet. I mean, they did it for Hydaelyn, right? The thing is, is that I feel like... They added that to Hydaelyn more for a story experience reason, uh, more than anything else. And it was really good, okay? It was really good, okay? That was awesome. When I said, like, you could do it with trusts in that moment, it was like, oh, that was amazing. So, personally, I would be fine if they just kept it to that. Like, just story, pivotal story moments that, including a trust with the whole scions or, or whatever for a story moment i'd be fine for it i would be fine with it their data says a huge number of people have engaged with barren dungeons in their own way i don't know what that means the 6.51 criterion dungeon will receive an increase in rewards compared to the past two they will consider feedback on this before determining the 7.x criterion rewards okay before I get ahead of myself, small step in the right direction, but we will see what these increasing rewards are. We'll first see, okay? What I'm feeling good about is this right here. So they're going to consider the feedback uh, for the 7.0 criterion rewards, okay? That's good, okay? I sincerely hope that they, 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 that they get their shit together and make these rewards for the next expansion better christ sake man i'm still baffled i like i i'm still so baffled that after eight months they left the second uh criterion rewards exactly the same i'm baffled at that like that's just insane for me that was just insane there will be a title for clearing all three criterion dungeons for 6.x but they're considering how else they could reward that to see if they can get it in time okay i, I don't well, this last word means but um okay that's something i wonder if that's being considered a part of the rewards but i mean i guess this is cool like right? i mean granted hoping the title is good if the title is good then it might okay there might be something uh 6.55's relic step will be tomes again surprise surprise yeah um they settled on tomes due to looking at data for how many weapons were made by players in past relic content. I think this is supposed to be like acquired. Uh, Yoshi acknowledges though that, however, there are some people who say that this reinforcement method is sloppy. Yes, it's lazy. So it's difficult. Some people may dislike doing elaborate things like the old weapon enhancement content, while others may feel that the enhancement methods like this one are not enough i think this is probably not compatible what the hell what what does this last part mean i think this is probably not compatible that's weird translation shit i don't know i have zero idea what that means in my opinion if they add an exploration zone to dawn trail the relic process should be completely sealed in the exploration zone Okay, so everything that you need to do to go through the relic step process should only be able to be done in the exploration zone. Okay, only in there. Because let me tell you, the relic steps that make you have to get, for example, oh, go do 10 crystals. And then it says, oh, you can acquire these in level 60 dungeon. And then because, because, doing, because relic grinding is all about efficiency, you're just gonna do that instead like you're gonna do that instead and that's fucking boring that is boring as fuck so they should just do the relic process and keep it entirely inside of the exploration zone no dungeons no fucking alliance raids none of that bullshit they settled on tomes on these days playing as these days playing multiple jobs is much more common i mean yeah that's one of your fucking selling points uh, it's one of the game's selling points. And they think tomes being something that naturally accumulates as you play 
makes it best suit your individual style. Best suit your individual style. No. I mean, maybe, but is it fun? No. No, it's it's not. The Mandeville relics have the highest completion rate of any relic so far. I wonder why. The more elaborate they make the relic content grind, the fewer people make one. I mean, yeah, but 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 then again, <laughs> it's easy to get, but is it fun? No. There is an inherent conflict between people that enjoy weapon enhancement as content and people that want a system that makes it easy to obtain weapons. Satisfying boards is very hard. Okay. In my opinion, they don't need to satisfy both, okay? One side is more correct than the other, okay? Having weapon enhancement as content is just, a, in my opinion, is just objectively better for the game. Why? Because it's something they can do, okay? Now we can get the, we can go into the specifics of it. What is it exactly do we have to do? For example, is the relic step spam 20 dungeons from a realm reborn? Is that fun content? No, it's not, okay? That's no different from tomes, okay? That's no different, okay? Because in tomes, you still spam dungeons. You just do roulettes, and that's it. Okay, that's it. I, how many how many roulettes have dungeons in doing? There's the expert. Actually, how many? Well, we can check right here. No. Um. Okay. These tomes. So, expert dungeons. Uh, fifty through eighty. Leveling. Leveling does include dungeon and trial. Okay, four. So four experts makes you do dungeons. Okay. This is inherently not that different from having a, for example, the heaven, heaven's word relic step that makes you do like 10 dungeons or something, like 10 old dungeons. Okay, that's inherently no different whatsoever. So both of these, both of these are boring, okay? Having tome, having just turning 1500 tomes is still just doing dungeons. It's still just doing dungeons. So that's not good. And having a relic step that makes you do dungeons is also the same shit with a different flavor. So that's not okay either. It's like I said before. They should just they should literally just do uh Shadowbringer's relic and just tone it down a little bit or change it slightly, okay? They should just do that again. In, in my honest opinion. They should just do that again. Right? Just do Shadowbringer's relic, but cut out all the process, all the steps that make you have to do that you have to get like 10, 15 crystals and you can get them from alliance raids or or old dungeons. They should just cut that out. Cut that out and keep it all inside the fucking exploration zone. It is. Like, like right now, right now I'm doing a Shadowbringers Relic. I think for Samurai. Where's my inventory button? Okay. Um, The first one, right? This is where you have to spam 20 fates, okay? Yes. I could go into Heaven's Word and spam 60 fates down synced at not even level 60, at like level 56, okay, boring as fuck, me alone, and have to do that 60 times. But it's a guaranteed drop, right? So that's why you're more inclined to do that, okay? But actually, I've gone into Bajja again. I, I, I went back into Bajja to do this, and I just do the face there, okay? You do the fates and the critical engagements. That's how you get the... That's how you get this, okay? So, when it comes down to it... Okay, if I have to spam fates either way, do I want to do it at level 56 on my own? Or, can I have... Can I just do the fates and Baja, which are much more engaging than the overworld fucking fates? Way more engaging, and there's a bunch of people. That sounds like more fun to me, okay? That sounds like more fun to me, okay? It's still spamming fates, okay? But it's a better alternative. And at the same time, because I'm also doing a Heaven's Word Relic at the same time, I'm also getting Poetics, okay? Literally in like, in an hour or so, just spamming, doing the fates, doing critical engagements, you get like, what, like maybe five, six hundred Poetics or something? Now that's cool, okay? And we all know that Heaven's Word Relics use so much fucking Poetics in those fucking steps, bro. So, in a sense, I'm like knocking two things out. It's like I'm doing one thing, but I'm in the process working at towards two things at the same time. And that's great. That's great. That's like what this game a lot of the time is about is that sometimes you'll do one thing and you'll be able to do three things at the same time, right? And that's what this expansion doesn't have. Okay? Criterion. Okay. 
one criterion is just criterion you don't get any other benefit outside of the mode itself actually that's you don't even get a benefit from the mode itself because it gives no rewards variant doesn't give any other benefit outside of the mode itself which is the fucking what the mount you do the 12 runs and outfits outfits right they always drop an outfit with the variant like they could have so easily have made it where like i don't know you have to run it let, let's say you have to get 12 crystals right and you get one for each path you take right so it's still like spamming a dungeon but variant is a little different because each route can be different okay at least it's a little bit there's a little bit of replayability like i remember the first variant was really cool okay you had branching paths if you did this rather than that the boss would do different mechanics if you if you did like specific things like i remember i remember if you killed these ads in a certain order you would get a new path in a secret boss like isn't that fucking sick like that's a really good concept right i don't know if the second one has it i don't know if the second one has that okay i only did it like three times and i was it. uh that's a really cool fucking uh concept right and it was really cool so like they could have tied relic shit to 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 stuff like that right like 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 something based on the different paths or or, or something or maybe whenever you killed one of the bosses you got a crystal or something like that like i, I don't know it could have been done but like but as i'm saying it's like these things don't like the main point of this was like these these content doesn't you don't work to you don't work towards multiple things at the same time it's only one thing right and only one of them do criterion doesn't even do any of them <laughs> you work towards nothing all right so in my opinion what they should do for Dontro is that if it has an exploration zone, they should keep the entire relic process inside of the exploration zone. Everything that you do to progress the relic process should be only be done inside of the exploration zone. So no steps that make you have to get 10 crystals and you can get them from a level, level 60 dungeon. Or have to get 15 and you get 3 from an alliance raid. Like, fuck that shit. Fuck that. Don't have that. Fucking exclude that. Exclude that. Okay? Just keep it all within the exploration zone. Okay? If there is one. If there isn't, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> okay? <laughs> if there isn't... Alright, GG, boys. <laughs> GG. But uh, that's what I think they should do. Okay? They should literally just make it Baja, but without the fucking... Uh, without the dungeon alliance raid spam. They will, they will take feedback into account for 7.x relic series. Okay, this is good. I hope this means that there is no way we get 1500 tomes turn in next expansion. I hope. <laughs> okay. I hope. PvP iteration will continue to 7.x, including CC frontlines and rubber rooms. Okay, that's good. CC was good. Yeah, CC was good. Like, there's some balancing issues with it that make me, like, not kind of want to play it. Like, you know, sleep turn into a little piglet uh silence like all that bullshit is fucking annoying as fuck but uh i mean the mode itself is good right um island sanctuary will get small updates in 7.0 but there are no plans for that to continue through 7.x they have other lifestyle content in mind instead if feedback is different they might reconsider okay um Okay, so I guess the only update Island Sanctuary will get in the next expansion is just the base expansion. It's just 7.0. And then the, for the rest of the patch content, it's never going to be touched again. Okay, this is sad. Yep, they're basically, they're basically abandoning it. They're just going to abandon it. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't remember if in the presentation at NA FanFest it included Island Sanctuary. I don't remember. I remember... Okay, when they said they were Criterion by variant Criterion Dungeon in the next expansion, I was very surprised. I was very surprised. I thought they were going to do exactly this shit. I thought they were just going to abandon it, right? But that's cool, right? That they're still going to try to improve it. They're still going to try to make it better, okay? They haven't given up yet, okay? Because... The idea of this is so cool, right? But just f fuck, man. Make the reward system better. 
you already got the content down it's fun but there's no rewards um but yeah this is aside for eyes and sanctuary i mean yeah it, it, it's it's just a spreadsheet simulator bro like it's not oh that's fucking sad and I, i'm being honest this is sad like a small updated 7.0 like what the hell is that gonna be like oh okay but then it's not but i am curious what they say is that they have other lifestyle content in mind instead like something new or like what are they talking about here i don't think they said anything of like lifestyle content in the presentation on na fanfest so maybe eu fanfest got something cooking i don't know but yeah this is sad i mean they 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 in my opinion, they failed. Um, I think this was doomed to fail, in my honest opinion, when they included the workshop as it is now. Um, and the fact that they doubled down on four made it just was like the nail in the coffin. Like it just it just needed to be something completely different, dude. Like just something completely different. Like they tried doing something new, but unfortunately, it's 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 just gonna be left in the road. They did it say feedback is different they might reconsider but like i don't know bro i don't know i think they're gonna abandon it and do something else the allied beast tribe cat boy will show up again what i, don't, I have no idea what they're talking about fall guys collab will be limited time the periodic content and periodic content and not permanent feature ah damn i mean it's gonna be there for a while right like how how long is it gonna be there maybe like five six months or something like that we'll get a long time but like when it goes away it'll be sad i am excited for this okay i mean i am excited for this we'll see how that turns out um okay that's it yeah that's the whole thing i think the live letter is on the 23rd at like 11 pacific i uh, like that's like one in the morning my time um, that's watchable, but shit. Um, what, what, more watchable than at 6 a.m. And this Friday, I think, is the 7 Rebirth presentation they have at TGS. So, uh, cool stuff to look forward this weekend. Right? Cool stuff to look forward to.